Welcome to the Mind of Basketball Podcast, aka the MOB Podcast. I am Evan. And I'm John. And this is our basketball podcast where we recap, break down, analyze the players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. How are you this Saturday afternoon, Ja? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How was your New Year's? My New Year's, uh, it was it was like a regular day. <laughs> That's all that it is, a regular day. <laughs> you need no no fireworks? No. No, I don't play with firecrackers. I don't play with fire, bro. <laughs> no, no spreading COVID? Yeah, no spreading COVID. <laughs> no right, spreading good, good, COVID. good. I had a good New Year's, a chill New Year's as well. I hope everyone had a good New Year's. I hope everyone had a good day today, and we'll have a good day today. We have much to discuss in terms of the league and the association of basketball, so we're going to jump right into it. Mm-hmm. All right, last night, it was two primetime games – we need to talk about first to start off with the better of the two, which were the defending champion Lakers going up against the, Sun, the Spurs, not the Suns. Yeah. And this was a really good game, back and forth contest. Uh, the Spurs really bounced back from their last uh, blowout loss they had against the Lakers a, f- a few nights ago. And but the Lakers was able to pull away in the fourth, lean the fourth with like the final minute. So can I get your thoughts on this game, John? Well, yeah, you said it. Um... For majority of the game, all up until that fourth quarter, it was just or the last moments of the fourth quarter. It was all about exchanging buckets. Both teams was getting to their spots and everything and hitting shots. Like you know, um, they turned the ball over a good amount of times and they were able to have the opportunity to create points off of that also. But that last four, that last minutes of the game, it was just like all about who could be the one to like you know make a basket in order to take the game. And that's what the Lakers did. And that's what AD did. And that's what LeBron did. They they were the ones that kind of basically helped close out those moments, made a dagger. KCP did get hurt. I'm at a certain point, but... Yeah, he's just raised up KCP. I hope he's okay. Yeah. But outside of that, um, the Lakers just got the better of, of, the, te- of the two teams in terms of offense, so... And they were able to take this game. Yeah, I think it really came down to that fourth quarter. I mean, it was trading, trading buckets. And every time the Spurs, I thought the Spurs would pull away, Lakers mm-hmm. always stayed there. And Anthony Davis was just cooking. I, they had no answer for him. I mean, they had no big man <laughs> to stop him. <laughs> so I know I was thinking in my head, I was like, damn, I know they missed Tim Duncan right now. <laughs> Cause he was just, I mean. Anytime he was posting up, it was a mismatch. Anytime he was throwing up for the three, it was a mismatch. I mean, just, he was just uh, – he's a matchup nightmare. He's so versatile. His game is just – it's unbelievable. Exactly. Um, as for Braun, I feel like he's been very chill this season so far. You know, like he hasn't been doing too much. Like you notice him, but, you know, not too much. You know, he's just kind of – he's kind of been chill laid back. He had a quiet triple-double. <laughs> a quiet triple triple double last night. And if you watch, it's like he doesn't even he doesn't like even have to go like yeah. hard like that. Exactly. At least for right now. He's really just sitting back, either one on one mismatch, okay, take it to the paint. Um mismatch, they come in double team, okay. AD back there somewhere. Yeah. Just throw it back to him and it's a wide open three. And that's yeah. what it was really last night. Yeah, it, it, and that goes to show you the maturity and wiseness of this man's game, especially at the age he is. He's not like, you know, even though he could still do a lot of things that we saw him do at a really young age, he's at a point where it's like, you know, he's on a really good team with a really good system and structure. He doesn't really do need to do much. All he got to do is just pick and choose his spots. And, uh, and as long as the team is doing well, the rest is going to fall into place. And I think that's yeah. the reason why you see him brought And again, you got somebody like an AD. Why do you need to do much, to be honest? You got somebody like an AD to rely yeah, on. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then you got Schroeder. And then mm-hmm. you got KCP who can shoot. And then you got Harold. And then you got Marcus Sol who can pass the ball. It's just like you got so many weapons out there. It's just like I, I already proven myself as a, as a Hall of Famer and as one of the best to play the game. Why do I need to do many much more when I got those guys to depend on too? Or lean on, not depend on, lean on. Yeah, I mean, he keep, yeah, if LeBron keep doing this, he could last another five years in the league. 
I mean, he he doesn't have to do as much. He's not he's it's not the 2018 Cavs, you know. <laughs> he has a great system, great players, as you said. I mean, there's nothing else really to say. Uh, as for the Spurs, I mean this this was a winnable game. This is a very winnable game. It was within their grasp. They just missed the shots they needed to make um, exactly. down the stretch within that final minute. Uh, they were down by two. Your, your man's airballed. Um, so you so you 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 went to bring that up to hurt me, huh? He's the best player on the team, and he airballed to tie the game. It'd be like that sometimes. You can't make like sometimes like you know you shoot a shot and then it just happens. But but if, but if Giannis was a free throw, it's <laughs> like like a little child, like in preschool. <laughs> <laughs> well, because like you know, it, it was good. Look at look at Demar was getting defended. Giannis was at the free throw line. That's all I gotta say. If it was Demar at the free throw line, it would have been game would have been ice. It happens, it happens to all the best of them, okay? But yeah, Giannis was at the free throw line. He missed that badly. Then did then Dame miss two last year and Patrick Beverly clowned him and, <laughs> and then and what, them like that. But yeah, we've seen Dame make clutch moments. Have we to- not seen Gian- Giannis made clutch moments. Giannis have clutch yes, moments. Yes, we have seen Giannis in clutch moments. Okay, then. So stop being a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm just saying. Yes, you are. You're being a casual fan. Wait, how? 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 Look, you went to bring that up. It was good defense. It was good defense. He just missed a shot. It was good defense. And while Giannis, he could have had an opportunity to be clutch at the free throw line, and he missed the free throw. Usually, usually casual. There's two types of casual fans. The casual fans that think Giannis is the greatest player to touch earth, and the other casual fans that think. That he's overrated and overhyped, and he's not that good, and that's you. <laughs> <laughs> look at, look at, look at, I, look at Giannis is nice, man. Why are we talking about Giannis? But Giannis is nice, man. He, okay. he's good. I'm just we'll, we'll, we'll stop the debate on, on Giannis right now. But as I was saying oh, about the Spurs, yeah, they had like good shots, and they just they couldn't come up with. It. I think who was who was it? I think it was Patty Mills who had a yeah who had a three late, but he yeah. had he had missed. Um, but they did hit. They did make enough shots to maintain and stay in the game. Like Derek White, Dejounte Murray, he was really cooking out there. Yeah, Kelvin Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kelvin Johnson Jr. I'm not Kelvin Johnson Jr. I'm, I'm thinking of somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it was. They just. I think it comes within. Kind of more experience because as the names have just players I just named they don't have that much experience yeah like Giante Murray Ken um Kendall Johnson yeah. uh Derek White and it's mm-hmm. come down to experience and I feel like the more experience they have uh the more they're gonna get better with this and I think Greg Popovich obviously the, great, the best coach arguably right. the best coach of all time teaching this and again as I said before there's no bad teams in the west this team has is better is a better Spurs team than last than last year's team and I feel like they could have an opportunity to, to really, again, fight for that last spot if they have an opportunity to be there. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that, that, you know that last possession where LeBron was complaining about a foul? Yeah. That was a push-off. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was definitely a push-off. They fouled him, yes. But yes. before that, that was a push-off. He, 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 he shined, got that cold on him. But, hey, it's, it's the king. Yeah, I, I feel like the refs... They say, oh, we just missed. That was a push-off. And then there was a foul on him. He's like, oh, well, touche. <laughs> that's how the ref bandaged that. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, a good hard fall win for the Lakers. And uh, hope that KCP can recover and is doing well as of right now, as of this recording. We don't know his status. But there should be an MRI f- for tomorrow to see how serious the injury is. Yeah. All right. At the last game of the night, that was last night, was battle between the two best point guards of this generation, Damian Lillard and Curry, and the Blazers and the Warriors. And once again, <laughs> the Warriors just underperform. Yeah. Look like they're out of sorts. Uh, they can't make open shots. Mm-hmm. Jeez, they can't make open shots. I-, I cannot stress that. I mean, all the open looks they have. Okay, Oubre is really struggling. Yeah, look. You in, know, terms of, in terms of shooting the ball. In terms, yeah, in terms of especially that three-point. Look, we said it. Um, This is where you're showing that, like, you know, the system is hindering without much ability to shoot and create space. Again, that structure, that system that they have up in Golden State is more suited for shoot to have shooters around them 
so you can create space, move around, and like you know, get shots and make them. Even though there's not that much good shooters on this team, and this showing that you desperately need play. You desperately need play right now because he's the one who can help this structure go. You know what I mean? And like mm-hmm. you know, it, it and it's and it's a struggle for the Warriors like right now because they just don't have that right now. They don't have that flow that we usually accustomed to seeing them. And it's new too because there's a lot of new players. People been moved around. They're in a new arena. Of course, it's not the Oracle Arena anymore. You can't just like you know feel like as if you gonna make everything Chase, huh? <laughs> Chase Center. Chase Center. Like, <laughs> So like you know, it, it's it. I still got faith. I feel like they could like you know, get better from this. Of course, it's, again, it's just the fifth fifth game for them, fifth or sixth game. I may be wrong, but but they're gonna get better from this. They're they're gonna get better from this. Uh, I think it's the fifth. Wait, hold on, let me check. Uh, I just, oh, I just had it. It, it was a fifth year. It was a fifth game. Your fifth game. See, this is just the fifth game for them. It's just a bump down the road. They're going to get better. But they, they it just needs to be something. I, I feel like there needs to be a plan B. Probably just need to be a plan B. Well, not only the spacing and the three-point, um, it's also just chemistry. I believe all the commentary, the Warriors commentary, they said Kevin Looney, Kevin, Kevin Looney, Seth Curry, and Draymond are the only three players that play together on that team. Mm-hmm. That means there's a whole bunch of other new pieces, young players, players that was traded there, and they need to find a way to fit that in. This was Draymond's um, first game back, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have that much of an impact. I mean, because this is a lot of new pieces. He needs to get used to it, it the players around him. Yeah. And they just need to build off of each other. I mean, it's not, it's not looking great for the Warriors right now. I'm not going to tell you the truth, but... I'm still holding that faith. Uh, they still have a back-to-back MVP. They yeah. still have multiple-time All-Star in Draymond Green. Still have a Coach of the Year and um, NBA champion Steve Kerr. Yeah. So I, I still have faith in them getting the, it together. And they do have some good players. Yeah. It's fresh. It's fresh. We just got to just give it time to marinate. That's all I can really say. Yeah, I agree. And James Wiseman did hurt his ankle late in the game. Yeah. Last night, but I don't think it's that severe. He was able to walk off. So, but you know, nothing. You don't know yeah, how injuries can definitely. play out. So, hopefully, he's okay because he's the he's been the only bright spot so mm-hmm. far this year. Exactly. All right. As to the Blazers, uh, something about the Warriors that just makes Dame tick. <laughs> uh, so, well, in the regular season. Don't do I that. mean, he's you just... don't need to bring that up right now, man. I'm just you're saying. Right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, and three in the playoffs. All right, so I'm just saying, uh, like Dame in the regular season. I don't know. He every time he goes against the Warriors, he just balls out. Yeah. He he did drop 51 against them a, a few seasons ago. I believe he had he has the current Chase Center record of 39 mm-hmm. against them. Yeah, and last night he had 34. If I'm right, yes, he had 34, and he was just out there. <laughs> they couldn't stop him. Anytime he goes in the paint, he's, he's just so smooth, yeah. so smooth. Anytime he goes in the paint against them, is that is that is the kid from Oakland? He, he's right from there, and like you know, that's the Golden State, like you know, however you want to call it, I guess home base or whatsoever. And like you know, of course he's gonna turn up. And again, when you're going against a person who like you know. Who you play? Who like you play similar like similar to, and the Stephen Curry in so many ways. Of course, you want to get that kind of feel. Of, like you need you have something to prove, even though you already have proven to be one of the best guards in the game. Um. So I'm not surprised. Uh, this is Dame being Dame. This is just Dame being Dame. But that whole Blazers team just had it going offensively, especially from the three point line. They 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 just they could just cook and create. CJ McCollum cooking and create. Damian Lillard cooking and create. Um, helping other teammates get open shots. You know, like you know, trying to find ways to get to the basket. Nurk is trying to be a bully, even though he kind of had a little bit of a struggle this game. Um, Enos Kenta fighting on the boards. It, it it just goes. It just goes. This team is looking dangerous. Well, they're not looking that dangerous, but they're on their way to looking dangerous. Let's say that. Yeah, and their defense has improved. I really think the pieces of Robert Covington and Derek Jones Jr. really is helping them this season. I mean, you see 
they look better defensively than they did last year. And they still need to improve on it and get it together more. But, yeah. I mean, last year, they were just giving up a whole bunch of buckets. Exactly. You know, it was just an offensive juggernaut last year, and that's how they willed their way into mm-hmm. the, the playing games and then into the playoffs. Exactly. But I feel like now, if they want to take that step that they wanted to take for the past five years mm-hmm. or so, they need to be good defensively, just how they were good defensively when they made it to the Western Conference Finals um, two seasons ago exactly. when they faced the Warriors because they did have a great defensive team. Yes, because this is what you wanted to see. You wanted to see this. Like, you know, we already knew them as a offensive juggernaut kind of team, especially being in the West, in which is, like, offensively talented. But if you want to be known as that top team, you got to do it on both ends. And, like, they finally found a way to improve on that. And I really like it. Yep, I agree. Great game. Great bounce back game from Dame after that bad performance he had against the Clippers. And a great and dominant win for the Blazers. Hopefully the Warriors can get it together soon. But, all right. Is there any player performances, any dominant displays, anything that you want to talk about go over right now? Let's just talk about that Wizards versus Timberwolves game. Um, In the beginning, like you fought straight up the gate, both teams, straight up the gate in the beginning, both teams were being highly aggressive, energetic, and like, you know, just playing the inside game, just playing the inside game, dominating, just picking their spots from mid-range area to inside the paint. But then that, that, <laughs> then the Wizards just ran away with it in terms of doing that same style, but being more, just being more overpowering over the front line of the, of the temp, Minnesota Timberwolves. Like, you know, Bradley Bill was cooking and creating, you know what Bradley Bill is going to do. He's um he's one of the top skill play he's one of the most skilled players in the game right now, even though he doesn't get mentioned or brought up as much he is, and like you know that whole front line Pachamora Bryant like you know everyone just getting inside the paint just trying to score from there and like you know because I barely seen them like hit that much three like I didn't see much much three point shots they don't get me wrong they did hit threes but they was more relying on being aggressive inside and working from there. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think this win just shows show you that Westbrook is the cancer. I feel like he just – and you see now they didn't have him, and guess what? They finally get their first win. So I think <laughs> that really proves that wherever team Westbrook's on, he's just, he's just you know, a terrible bad energy, a bad vibe, and he should really be out the league, to be honest with you, if I'm being honest with myself. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need much casuals talking about some crazy. <laughs> Listen, you know you gotta hear that. Tell me you're not gonna hear that tomorrow. Oh, it's a, oh, oh we gonna hear it. I'm gonna. I probably already seen it already before this thing even started this morning. <laughs> like I probably already heard it, heard it enough, man. But look, say what you want, but I'm telling you, just give this team time. Just give this team time, and I'm telling you, they're gonna be ready. Especially they're an explosive team. You can clearly see they're an explosive team. They're going to come at you. Mm-hmm. I, li- I like how we kind of gave up on them and then they won without Westbrook. <laughs> exactly. It, but wait, hold on. It took them getting into a new year to be a new person. Oh, new, new year, new me. Yeah, new year, new me. <laughs> so, and, and, uh, yeah. And I think you're going to say that with another team also? Am I going to say that with another team? Uh, oh, oh, yes, I, yes, I am. Yes, I am. You're right, you're right. <laughs> I am. Speaking of that, the Wizards weren't the only winless team to finally get a win. The media, the what the the kings of mediocrity, the <laughs> Detroit Pistons, got a win last night, and it was a big one. Not to be mm-hmm. underestimated, they beat the Boston Celtics, who yeah. have been playing great basketball as of late. And this was a really, really good, tight, close game, back and forth. Jamie Grant had a great game. Mm-hmm. He was just attacking at will, very aggressive. Um, I like to see that out of him. Uh, I not yeah, that's the player you hate. But <laughs> um, the Celtics. I mean, the Celtics had so many, t- so many shots, so many times to to win or to yeah, tie the game. I know. Marcus Smart had a wide open three when they was down by two. He missed. He missed. Big. Uh, Tatum had a wide open three and then mm-hmm. down by two. I think he missed. Mm-hmm. Then Jalen Brown had a wide open three. To take the um to take the lead, and he missed. I mean, yeah. no, to side the game. Yeah, and he missed. 
Uh, I mean, there's, there were so many opportunities for the Celtics to win, but give credits to the Pistons. I said yeah. Jeremy Grant and D Rose. He was giving us a little flashbacks, you know, just of being aggressive, going mm-hmm. to the paint. No, doesn't care who's behind him, doesn't care who's in front of him. He's just attacking. That's what I love. See how the D Rose is. I mean, that's what everybody loves to see out of D Rose. Yeah, but he attacking with grace. Like what we used to see him do, like he's doing that now, but yet he has polished the game more to be more skilled. But yeah, he attacking the rim with grace. And that's what you like to see. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he really um like kind of revitalized his career, mm-hmm. starting with the Timberwolves. Yeah, I mean, especially after that, you know, fifty point performance that he had, yeah, and yeah. then he just kept going with that throughout the rest of the year. And now he's now he's back. Not he's showing signs of what he used to be, yeah. which is great because he's not obviously he can never go back to how he was yeah. after all those injuries. Yeah. Hmm. So, but this was, this was, this was great. I like to see out of D Rose and this was a great win by the Pistons and I make fun of them a lot, but I'm glad, I'm glad they, they got their win back. Maybe, you know, Chauncey Billups and them, they celebrated, you know, Rick Hamilton, <laughs> they celebrated, you know, Detroit Isaiah basketball, Thomas, uh, bad Thomas, boys celebrating. Yeah, oh, the better the bad boys celebrating, they beat the Celtics. You know, they celebrated. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's just one of the things I wanted to go over. The other thing I want to go over briefly. I mean, the Hawks got a big, big win against the Nets with KD and Kyrie playing, and I think at the, the tail of two halves, it was close in the first. Then the Hawks pulled away in the second half, and Trey Young and um, John Collins. Did you see the dunk? Pull up the footage, please. Pull up the footage. Did you see that dunk he had? Not the not the lob with the glass. Yeah. I told him when he dunked on Jared Allen. Mm. I mean, geez, you gotta if you haven't seen that, please check that out. Please check that out. But the Hawks, this was a really good win. They clearly bounced back from the last loss they had against the Nets. And they've been playing really good basketball. I mean, the Nets only gave them their first loss and they just avenged that. Yeah. So watch out for the Hawks. Watch out for the Hawks. You see, their Trey Young is clearly more of a fixture in terms of his leadership than he was last year. Yeah. In terms of skill, he's basically maybe a little better, but you can see his leadership is really affecting. Exactly. And the pieces around him at their offseason moves has been really beneficial to him and beneficial to the Hawks. Mm-hmm. I think they can make a little make a little push. We'll, we'll have to see. Well, uh, yeah, you have that much young talent. You pair that with the fact that the veteran presence of Gallinari, Rondo, you add on a good talented offensive player in um in Bogdanovich, like you know, um Bogdan, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Yeah. Like, it, you, I I feel like in the East you're poised to do something. Yeah. And last but not least, I want to talk about the impressive, another impressive win by the Phoenix Suns facing off against the Nuggets. And you can see, you can really see with each passing game, the impact of Chris Paul. I'm going to keep bringing it up because it's important. The impact of Chris Paul on and off the court. Defense, offense. He might not be scoring a lot, but you see his passion. You see the playmaking ability that he has. You see his IQ, which is on a whole nother level. You see how much he's helping 18. You see how much he's helping Devin Booker. And I mean, and of course, not only that, he's just clutch. I mean, he had a big shot um, late in the fourth. That kind of uh, dagger jump shot. And the Suns was able to close out the Nuggets. The Nuggets are still fighting. And also I wanted to mention that Murray finally looked like he was back to the Murray of old. <laughs> he had a he had a really good game. But yeah. the story here is, of course, the Suns beating the team that went to the Western Conference Finals last year. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you said it all. Um, Like, you know, his impact. Like, you know, Aiton, like, I felt like Aiton felt more free playing with, yes. you know, the pick and roll, the, like, you know, just all you need to do is just get to your spot and he's going to find you easy. Like, you know, the things, the things like that and the three point, the three ball for everyone. Like, you know, it's just like, you could just see his impact just all over the game, all over the game. But you also got to give credit to the Nuggets because they was fighting and they was doing the same thing. Their ball movement, their creating, their creation, um, um, Murray, like just cooking and creating. Jokic hitting big shots, like, you know, you just got to give them credit. You just got to give them credit. But yet the Suns are coming. The Suns are coming. 
That's all. Mm-hmm. That's all that really that has to be said. All right. Well, now I think that's enough for that. And now it's time to go into predictions, as we always do, Jai. We have a lot of early games. Basically, every game is an early game for um, later on in the afternoon and tonight. So let's jump right into it. The first game of the of the primetime games that we'll be going over starts off the Rockets or the Kings. I got the I got the uh, I got the Kings. I got the Kings. Yeah, the Kings bouncing back off the loss they had against the Rockets the other night. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got the Kings as well. The Knicks or the Pacers? Pacers. Pacers as well. The Th- Thunder or the Magic? Magic. I got the Magic as well. Hornets or the 76ers? 76ers. 76ers. Raptors or the Cavaliers? Cats. That's a. Well, I'm off well, I messed up. I messed up. Wrong, wrong one. Cavaliers or the Hawks? I still got the Cavaliers. I'm telling you, they've been balling. Colin Sexton. They have been balling. But Colin Sexton ain't Trey Young. I got the Hawks. <laughs> the reason why I messed up because the team is playing right, playing, playing right after, which is the second primetime game that we'll be talking about. The Raptors or the Pelicans? Pelicans. I got the Raptors. Raptors need these wins. Yeah, <laughs> they haven't been playing the best, so I feel They've like they're playing need... good, but they just haven't been playing what we expected to see that chip on their shoulder. I see. Yeah, that. yeah. But all right, as I think it's time to wrap things up now. Any final thoughts, John? No, I'm just. I just hope we don't see no more blowouts and more closer games. Well, there were a lot of close games last night. Yeah, yeah. So. There was a lot of uh, for this is like the first night and many nights. Even though one of the games that we had to go over in depth was a blowout, like this was the first, this was like one of the days of many nights. Of course, it was a blowout. The Warriors were playing. <laughs> they looking like the Warriors from 2010. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I told you this is their, this is their, um, <laughs> their curse. <laughs> yeah, this is this is their curse. This is their curse. No play, no nothing. Of course. But all right. Uh, Nonetheless, thank you guys for watching today's pod. Make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And once again, I'm Evan. And I'm Ja. And this was the Mind of Basketball Podcast.